Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Collab by Portal Dragon. The game plays two to four players with a solo player variant, takes about an hour and a half to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Collab, you and your fellow mad scientists will be sharing a laboratory space attempting to build inventions, whether it be mechanical objects or potions or perhaps even monsters. And the game we're going to play out in rounds. Each player will take their turns, placing down their minions and then their scientists gathering resources and potions and cards to build a 4x4 grid. And once that 4x4 grid has been built, everybody's going to tally up their scores. And the player who has built the best grid and scored the most points with their end and beginning of game scoring cards will be the winner. Will you achieve victory by gathering the most points while working together in a shared space? Find out in the game Collab, currently on Kickstarter. So let's go ahead and begin the setup of the game, and I'll explain this in detail. The first thing that you're going to want to do is select a number of players based on the players that are playing, up to four players. If you're playing with the solo mode variant, check the rules that will have a very specific unique setup design as well as resources and characters that will be included in the game. I won't explain that, but you can see it on the Kickstarter page. In a four player game, however, you're going to be giving each and every player a unique and individual character, whether it be Luciana or Ivy or Victor or Elias. Give every player a mad scientist and three minions and set them offside the board that they're playing. Additionally, you're going to give every single player four white dice. These are going to be your starter dice. They're useful, but they're not super impactful. You'll get better ones later. Additionally, give every player two cards. These are your choice A, choice B, one-time use per game type cards, and of course your uh, end game cards. You're going to choose one of these guys here uh, and one of the specific choices to score you points based on what they require. You're also then going to go ahead and shuffle up the decks. There are three decks in the game that you're going to be utilizing. There's the potion deck, there's going to be the mechanical inventions, and monsters deck. Once you shuffle them up, place them down within reach of all players. Set aside the three specific types of die. You have the blue ones, you have the purple ones, and the red ones. These will correspond with resources that you will be utilizing with your own minions and your opponent's minions, as well as the ones in your pool. There's going to be a point tracker as well. With the point tracker, just simply take a unique token or a unique one of these markers here and place it down at the bottom of the board indicating zero points. There's a tracker that goes all the way to 100 and you basically whenever you score points in the game and at the end of the game, you'll move that marker up to score your additional points. Person who's the highest at the end is the winner. The next thing you'll do is the board. When you build the board, simply start by placing the middle piece in the middle section. Then you are going to place out all of the different towers, all six of them, across from the board just like you see here. Additionally, you'll place the laboratory spaces in between them. There is a starter setup for the game for newer players. However, if you are not new to the game, you can simply place them as you see fit. There's also going to be additional starter little tiles that you'll place randomly along the board inside the towers themselves. And then there's going to be these starter building spaces or upgrades. You're going to place one of them, a random colored die, in each of the locations with two build icons. You're then uh, going to be placing one of those and a gray wild die upgrade in the spaces that have a single build option, which means that you're going to have three spaces on the board with two upgrades and three of them with one. The last thing that you're going to do is you are going to place down three colored die randomly in the locations at the bottom of the tower with the unique resource circle symbols. Additionally, you'll place the three random resource symbols in the three locations at the bottom of each of the towers that have a gray wild card symbol. After you've done that, you have built the entire game and all players are ready to play. Go ahead and select a starting player and then go ahead and begin by drafting down units. When you begin to draft, you're only going to be drafting two of the three specific minions that you have, and you'll place those minions at the bottom of each of the towers that you choose. When green decides to go first, green will take their character, they will place it in one of the three windows, the bottom one, and then select the resources on the lowest area of the tower. If there is a unique token on that area, you'll gather that token as well. So for instance, the green player will gather a blue token, which he'll place in his 
his pool there, and he will also gather a card of his or her choosing, in which case they will take a potion, because blue corresponds with potions mostly. And then red, or then orange is going to do the same thing, select another space, gathering the die, and whenever you collect a die, you'll place it in your bin, and then also we'll be gathering a blue um, token that they will be utilizing throughout the game. So simply take one of these tokens and place it down. And it's just gonna go like that in turn order, going all the way around the board, collecting the resources and cards that they are going to be able to use or hopefully will be able to use up until the point where it gets to the last player. Once it gets to the last player and they've collected all of their tokens and of course their cards, then it's going to go back the other way in counterclockwise order, giving the last player two turns and the first player is going to be the last to decide but the first to begin the game. Once it has gotten back to the green player, the green player is going to start the game. And what I will say about this is the board is rather large, as you can see. You need a larger table than this space in order to play a four player game because everybody will have a four by four grid. However, when you start the game as the green player, uh, you're going to be rolling the dice in your pool and everybody can go ahead and do so as well. So when they take their die, they're gonna go ahead and roll their die and then they're going to get different symbols on their die. And those die are going to be utilized on your minions or when you take them to purchase resources. So this guy is going to take this specific unit and then take one of the die and slot it in to the specific minion. And then place it somewhere on the board with a space. You can choose any space that you would like. And when you do so, you are going to collect one of the two different actions on the tower that you place your unit in. So for instance, when I place this guy here with the purple lightning bolt symbol in this tower, I can choose to take one of the two different uh, actions. Action one is going to allow me to get cards. Action two is going to let me get any card. So I can take the purple and blue card, or maybe I just want a red card. And then after they go ahead and do that, that would be the first action. They will then be able to take a unit off of a location. So for instance, green might want to take this unit off of this location and then gather a, another action of the two of their choosing. So in this case here, I'll take a blue token, placing it into my supply board. Whenever you take off a unit, if it has a die on it, you're going to discard the die into your little die pool here. You'll be able to utilize that die when you rest, but more on that later. After you have placed a unit on, taken its action, and then taken a unit off and taken its action, you'll take your last and final step of the turn. You'll take your mad scientist and place it anywhere you want in any of the different six laboratory spaces. When you do that, you'll have two options. You will either have the ability to collect or the ability to build. Whenever you choose to collect, you are going to be utilizing the minions adjacent to you. So in this case here, green is going to have three minions adjacent to them. You will be able to utilize as many actions as you can based on the minions. So total the sum and then divide it among the different upgrades that are available and collect the actions that you would choose. So for instance, if you had a action for two and another one for two and one for one, you could only use the two and one so you could choose which action that has two on it and one and thusly gain the rewards and in this case here the green character is going to get a red and a wild die so they will take a red and a purple and place it into their pool however if they wanted to they could instead choose to build Whenever you build, you're going to first put an upgrade down based on the slots available. And in this case, I would place a singular upgrade token in the space. There's always going to be three ones or starters if they are already there. Then there's going to be the twos, which are going to be a little bit more powerful. And finally, one three, thusly building up the board and giving you more options. Once you've placed the upgrade down, you will then follow up with the build. There are two different types of builds on the build spaces in the locations of the lab. The first one is build one, the second is build two. Whenever you place a unit or your scientist in a space that has a build, it will also have a symbol allowing you to either build a potion, allowing you to build a monster, or allowing you to build a mechanical engineering triggered ability. 
When you build, you must have the resources. Each card is going to function the same as far as the cost. On the top right hand side, there will be a cost to the card, which will determine if you can build it or not. In order to build a card with a cost, you have to either use A, wild symbols in your supply, and you'll have up to four, or you'll have at least four at the beginning of your turn, and maybe more, but you'll have to discard down if you have more at the end. You can also utilize die in your pool. The die you rolled can be discarded into your cup in order to satisfy the requirements. And also, finally, you'll have the ability to utilize the die of yours and your opponent's minions that are adjacent to you. So for instance, if you were to have characters with die in them present next to your scientist, and they have different symbols and amounts, you can use those to reduce the cost of the cards you'd like to build. And if you have enough, for instance, if you wanted to build something for four, and there was four exact units that you needed, or four exact uh, items that you needed inside these little guys here, you can spend them and place them down on your board. When you place down your specific items that you want to be built, whether it be monsters, potions, or triggered mechanical abilities, uh, you will then score points, or you'll enact some unique twists to the game. There are three different types of cards, and they work differently. The potions are going to involve placing potions on them to score points throughout the game. Monsters will have end-of-game abilities, build abilities, which means they happen as soon as they come into play. And then for the most part, you're going to have these mechanical objects, which will have a triggered ability. Whenever you place down an object with a triggered ability, you'll take a triggered token from a bag, place it on there, and then every time you build adjacent to it, you're going to enact whatever action the card has. At the end of the turn, flip over any triggered tokens on the cards that you have in your build space so that they can be used again on your next turn, provided they're able to be used. After you've placed your scientist down and chose to either build a card in your 4x4 grid or collect any spaces that you can on the outside, your turn is going to end and the next player's turn will begin. And they'll just do the exact same thing. They'll take their minion out, they'll place it down with a die, they will then remove another minion with maybe a die on it, putting it into their discard pool, gathering the actions, placing their scientist out, and choosing collect or build. The last thing that's most important is if you have no die to use, because eventually you're going to run out of die when you're playing the game, uh, they're all going to go into your little die pool here, you can choose to rest. Unfortunately, with resting, you can't take a minion away or place one down or place your scientist out on any of the lab spaces, but what you can do is place your scientist in the middle of the lab. You can then take all your die that you have in your little pool here, re-roll them, and of course gather two unique tokens of your choosing. Two of any card, you can take two potions, or you can take two of the different valuable resources that you'll be utilizing to build things in the game. Once you've done that though, your turn is over and you'll simply pass to the next player. And like I said, the objective of the game is to gather four by four grid and whoever has built that four by four grid on the field will then end the game by allowing every player equal turns. You'll then tally up your points based on the cards that you have present on the field, any points that you might have gotten by choosing your victory conditions, whether it be uh, early in the game or just saving one of them for the end. And of course, um, you'll also be gathering points on your player uh, space where you're building things based on the cards that you have built. There's a ton of different ways to score points with the cards, uh, which I won't get too much into, into as far as how the game is played, but basically that's the idea of the game. Uh, otherwise though, that's pretty much how you play the game Collab, currently on Kickstarter. Well, now for my review. So while the name of the game is Collab, you're not really working together in this game. Yes, you can manipulate your minions when you're placing die out, trying to uh, score as many uh, resources on the field as you can by placing your scientist adjacent to those characters to build cards and hopefully utilizing your opponent's minions to do the same. Most of the time, they're probably not going to want to help you unless it's going to help them as well. And when it does, or if they notice it is, they're going to start kind of manipulating the board as well to prevent you from being able to build things because the build uh, structure is going to be rather important. You want to spend as many turns building cards as you are gathering resources. And if you're doing the resources one more than the building, you'll start going behind. You're also going to want to think about placement in this game. Placement is rather important. You're going to try to get the best placement possible, the best die roll possible, so that you can get the resources that you need fast enough to build your specific 4x4 grid. Building the grid is the main 
main thing that's going to be relevant in this game. There are specific unique turn um, actions that will score you points. You'll have choices that you can make in order to score additional points in the game. But as far as scoring points goes, you want to make the best grid possible. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. This game has two separate parts to it. Part A is building your 4x4 grid, and Part B is manipulating the board here, utilizing your and your opponent's minions to your advantage to gather as many resources as possible. In addition to that, you're also going to have to make the difficult decisions of whether you want to collect more resources during your turn in addition to the minions that are already gathering, collecting resources for you, or do you want to build? And as the game progresses, you might be able to do both when you choose to collect, but there's going to be few and far between as far as that goes. Uh, then there's also a unique twist to it as well. There are three different types of building cards that I've talked about a lot, but they all function differently. And sometimes they all work in tandem as well. When you're dealing with the potion cards here, you are going to also be manipulating the potion tokens. These are resources that you can gather on the board as well. Uh, certain all, all cards are going to score you points, or at least most of them will, and they're all going to have unique abilities. And this potion card, potion cards, will have a certain number of potions that you can place on them. And when you do so, you'll get a specific action. And these are going to score you victory points throughout the game and at the end of the game, depending on what they say. The mechanical ones are my favorite. These are the ones that have triggered abilities. Basically, when you place one down, it doesn't do anything. However, whenever you place a card adjacent to it, it will flip over the triggered ability, netting you some type of bonus whether it's additional resources or additional victory points, and there's a ton of fun combinations that come from that. Then you have the monsters. Monsters can score you big points, and they can also be used for unique twists, which can operate between the two different decks and help you, or uh, solidify additional points when you're building other types of cards around them. And they have a wide variety of selections as well. For instance, one of them is a build that lets you draw one, upgrade any, on any level, no, sorry, draw one upgrade of any level and place it on the board. So it allows you to also manipulate the board here as well whenever you use these monsters, sometimes to your benefit and sometimes to your detriment. But usually when it's to your detriment, you'll score a lot of points. Overall though, this game is beautiful to look at. It has a ton of variety as far as choices that you can make, but the turns are rather simple, which makes it easy to understand and easy to uh, basically take your turn. It's more difficult in just the choices that you have to make. Also, the fact that the board is ever-changing, and especially if you play the first game with the first build, you can go ahead and kind of m make your own type of a map, and uh, resources are gonna come out at random, but the game is always going to play the same way as far as structure goes, so it's just all about building that four by four grid. It's also kind of got a deck gathering type of a thing going on, like quarriers a little bit, where you can gather three different types of die, place them in your pool, and when you gather more of them and you roll them out, you'll have more options. And the die, of course, that are colored are way better than your starting ones. They'll have wild symbols on them. Some of them will have a number two next to them, which will mean you'll get two of that resource whenever you're discarding it or building next to it. And so you can manipulate it that in that way. When you're also building with these guys here, you have to be careful. If you spend them early, you might have to rest and Generally speaking, resting is the last thing you want to do because that means you're not taking part in placing your minions out or even building cards onto your board. But yes, you will net points and you'll be able to utilize dice. Another thing too I didn't mention in the gameplay is that once per turn on your turn, you can go ahead and uh, discard a card or a die or a token or a potion and it'll let you take a die and re-roll that die. I love the fact that you're kind of working together but nobody likes each other and they're just kind of like, people People are getting in your way a little bit. They're not really trying to hurt you necessarily, but they're also not trying to help you. However, they do have to collaborate because they do have to work in the same lab. So it's a bunch of uh, co-workers who really dislike each other, forced to be put into a situation where they can utilize other people's stuff, but they also want to be, get out of my way at the same time. And that is the feeling of the game when you're playing it, and it works really well. The idea of laboratory setting with all the different scientists kind of pitted together to create their machinations, trying to be the best scientists, all while having to like push over cylinders and knock over monsters to get to build what they want to build is a huge part of this game.
Uh, as far as negatives go, I, I suppose the fact that when you're when you're placing on this board here and manipulating it in certain ways, you're always going to want to decide if you can build to build, but if not, you're kind of pushing yourself back because you have to gather the resources in the game and you have to try and if, if you try and be as accurate as possible, it might push you back a turn. Whereas if you're willing to sacrifice, it might allow you to build sooner. And so that can slow the game down a little bit. Um, additionally, not every single card works with one another. So sometimes when you're building one card or there's gonna be cards in your hand that are kind of like dead cards, but that's okay really because you get a ton of cards in the game and you can discard them. You can only have a total of six cards in hand at any point. And just, just because there's not a, there's you no know, one or two cards you're not gonna to wanna to use, you can kind of push those out and try and build the best hand possible to create your grid. But then on the other hand, if you don't want to, you can choose to keep them, placing them on your board to kind of push yourself ahead of the curve or like, and there's kind of like a race in the game and push yourself ahead in that race. And you'll have that kind of an option. But like I said, it does slow things down. And additionally uh, to slowing things get down, the game is very thinky. There's a lot of options, a lot of choices, and a lot of combinations. While it being sim simple in nature, and as far as what your turn does, place one, remove one, place the scientist, take one of the two actions, it has a ton of options. Which die do you want to place in your minion? Which minion do you want to remove? Which minion is the best one to remove for the resources you can get? But if you do that, you might not be able to place a scientist where you want. And then what card do you want to build? Where do you want to build that card? So yes, analysis paralysis can happen in this game because there's a lot going on. This is not for the faint of heart. This is probably not for kids. Maybe you know, younger teenagers can handle this type of a game, but it does have a lot of meat in it for the vivid light theme of the game. But regardless, overall, this game was a beautiful uh, game. It was a, a wonder to play. I really, really enjoyed myself playing this. We played this with two, three, and four players. Didn't play the solo version though, so I couldn't tell you about that. But when we played this game, each and every time it was really, really fun. And the options and choice gave this game a lot of life. The theme put the game really well together and uh, everybody had a great time playing. I think one person commented that the board was a little dark, but this is a prototype. Everything here is a prototype. So I don't know what the final version is going to look like or the final cards. As you can see, some of them are still in paper, so I'm not gonna grade them negatively on that, but I will let, you know, I will state that that is a thing in this game, which is just a little darker than probably most people I knew when we were playing. Uh, had a problem with. Personally, it didn't really bother me all that much, but I've got my trusty trusty contacts in. So overall, a solid, wonderful little game. Collab, this is a game I would definitely keep. It's a game I would back. And if you're interested in a game like this, you should take a look at it too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Collab. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below in the description, currently on Kickstarter. Additionally, if you want, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, more reviews, not even just the games that you see here on, on the YouTube channel. They're separate, reviewed by somebody else, so you can get a different perspective of different games. You can also go ahead and Patreon us for a buck every month. It helps us produce more content. It helps us with our cameras and quality. And of course, our live streams every week. And mainly right now, it's paying for shipping for games whenever we do give them away, which uh, we're gonna start doing here soon. Um, Moonshell, a mermaid game, my wife's game is being manufactured. We're on the last leg of it and I'll give more detail on the campaign if you're part of that. And if not, you can take a look at it at moonshellgame.com. Last thing I gotta say, this game has some beautiful miniatures. These are 3D printed, I know, because they look like a, a 3D print that my machine can print. They're still really beautiful, really nice. I like the size of them, uh, but I don't think I mentioned the quality of these guys here. I'm really looking forward to seeing the finished versions of these guys. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to collaborating with you, provided that I beat you <laughs> next time. I'll get you, puppy. I'll get you, I'll get you, I'll get you.